At the end of every unit, your teacher has a chance to teach a lesson about other lessons and their context to enhance. But what do you suppose our teacher has us do? He skips the lesson, makes us a percent of digital LEQ. Elections need historical evidence, reason that can corroborate in advance. A complex thesis that Dr. John P. Irish would admire. Then we drop the screencast like a single that is fine. Students create a screencast for you to like, subscribe, and share. We know you've had all the John Green and the Steve Helmer yet. You can bear if we have the most views by 10 p.m. Eastern on the fifth day. We earn 500 bonus points, which very virtually guarantees an A. With much more, much more fan food, we present, present, present our digital LEQ. In this slideshow, we are going to be talking about how Europeans established colonial empires that transformed the global economy with new systems of labor throughout the years of 1500 to 1750. In the Americas, people started to rely on the new labor system made, such as slavery and the slave trade, which affected many aspects of both cultural and social growth. Although relying on these systems had its negative impact on different countries and colonies, the economy ran off these harsh conditions just to keep a level and maintain developed trade system. The new ways that the colonial labor system began and surely didn't come to end after any time soon. We have three big questions you will have to answer to. After being introduced to our historical evidence and having new understanding of the causes and effects, how did Europeans adapt to new trading systems and how had they changed when travelers brought more good and diseases? What type of negotiations were made between the colonies and how had they affected their views of life? What type of actions did the Europeans take to keep their communities running? During the 17th, 18th, and early 19th centuries, West Africa was the primary region from which Europeans acquired the large numbers of slaves used for agricultural labor throughout the Western Hemisphere. This new system of labor was relied on heavily because of the terms of work and the amounts of it that wanted to be done by the Europeans. One of the main examples of the extent reached to provide for this labor system was a slave trade along the Caribbean. The conditions of slaves in the Caribbean were probably worse than they were anywhere else in the world, with the possible exception of slaves in Portuguese Brazil. Slaves in the Caribbean worked on extremely labor-intensive sugar plantations and were considered as expendable labor due to the ready and continuous supply of new slaves arriving from Africa. In our first source, we, we have a picture that comes from the courtesy of uh, Yale University Library. Um, it shows a picture of the delegate of Schwann during the European expansion. He, in the picture, he's negotiating the return of the English hostages. And he wants pretty much, he, pretty much what he wants to do is bring the peace back. That, and he wanted to start uh, building this peace in October of 1764. Europeans, they uh, they wanted to negotiate with Native Americans for land, but they started noticing that the population started to increase. Like uh, like once they started, they started noticing that the Europeans' population had like was was increasing. It led them to like a strong conflict because they started noticing that they didn't really need to negotiate. They had a strong population. They were overcoming the Native Americans. So they were like, why negotiate? So it led them to a conflict. And um, pretty much they they gained this overpower over them. They gained, they pretty much saw that they were a stronger power for them. So what they pretty much, I guess you could say, offered them was they offered that the American Indians would do free labor, quote unquote, free labor, which is not really free because, I mean, which is not really like a deal because it's free labor. So it worked for a small period of time. The American Indians, the Native Americans bought it. But then they try to fight back and these Europeans tried to enslave these American Indians 
but they really failed because there was a lot of escape routes in, in the north. For our next piece of historical evidence, we have a quote from an article titled Creating New Social Orders, Colonial Societies, 1500s to 1700s by Dr. P. Scott, which makes this a secondary source. The quote states, the transition from indentured servitude to slavery as the main labor source for some English colonies happened first in the West Indies. As Europeans move beyond exploration and into colonization of the Americas, they brought changes to virtually every aspect of the land and its people from trade and hunting to warfare and personal property. European goods, ideas, and diseases shaped the changing continent. Transatlantic travelers have been influenced by the diseases, goods, plants, and animals. Herbs, flowers, seeds, and roots had also made their way through the transatlantic voyage, which became a product of goods that they were able to trade. European trade had increased the dependency of these transatlantic travelers, while at the same time, European diseases had begun to spread, which led to the decrease of the population and survivors having to find a new way to adapt to a new life. The quote from the article relates to our thesis and theme for economic systems because the quote reflects on how products and diseases impact the economy of transatlantic travelers and Europeans. The exchange of goods such as pelts, copper kettles, and weapons had created a huge impact in the changing of material cultures of the native people. Diseases such as smallpox had made the very young and the very old more vulnerable, which increased their mortality rates. For the next piece of historical evidence, we have a drawing by a native Mesoamerican that's featured in a book called the Kingsborough Codex, making it a primary resource. In the picture, you can see a well-dressed Spaniard pulling an injured native's hair, revealing the cruel treatment that natives went through. Having slaves and people to do labor was common because in most cases, there weren't enough colonists to finish the work. They also couldn't always rely on the power provided by animals, wind, or water. Therefore, the more need for this system by the Spaniards, the more desperate they became, causing them to be more forceful towards the natives. Maintaining the society greatly relied on working fields and building villages, which is why the Spaniards did what they could to ensure that work was getting done in order to fully run a working and growing society. The interaction that the Spaniards had with the natives show the extent of harm that they would go to to be able to take care of their community and what they needed to expand their empire and land. This source can connect to theme two, cultural developments and interactions, and also our thesis because there developed an idea that instead of the Spaniards tending to their own work, they would create a pattern of using natives as their workers or also referred to slaves. This also creates an idea of dominance because of how the Spaniards thought they would be able to control the natives out of right of conquest. Because of this control over the natives, it also created a view on how the Spaniards were seen by other groups in the society. For our next piece of historical evidence, we have a quote from an article titled New World Labor System, American Indians, created through the LDHI, which makes this a secondary source. The quote states, regional variations influence the types of encounters different European groups had with Native Americans. In New Spain, colonial authorities relied on the pre-existing Native practices and networks to exercise power over local populations. In contrast, Europeans struggled to subjugate Native Americans living in more decentralized societies. Europeans also attempted to enslave American Indians through military coercion and trade for captives from inter-Indian conflicts. Europeans had wanted to negotiate with Native Americans to increase their land, but as their population was increasing, it led to conflicts between the two. American Indians, to try and negotiate once again, had done free labor work, but the North had ultimately tried to enslave these American Indians only to fail. The negotiation had came to a conclusion to increase European lands after promising peace with these American Indians. The quote from the article relates to our thesis in theme three, governance, and theme five, social interactions and organization, because the quote determines the power between the Europeans and the American Indians and how they were able to control their land. Also because their practices were able to take power of each other's populations due to enslavement. In this next image, the picture shows a real life situation that happened during the Atlantic slave trade, which is one of the major trades from the 15th to 19th century. It involved the shipment of people on ships that either landed in North or South America. As shown in the picture to the right, 
Africans would be taken from their families by Europeans, even if they had children to take care of. They would be transported to the Americas and mainly worked on tobacco, cocoa, sugar, or cotton plantations. This type of human trade began in the 15th century and didn't come to an end till later on in 1807 when there was an abolition of slave trading by Britain and some other countries. Although many countries went through with this, there was still illegal trading that continued for 60 more years after. Not only were products and crops traded and sent out in ships, but also slaves, human beings, which reflects the importance of keeping the labor systems growing and running, along with trade routes and the economy. This source connects to theme four, economic systems, and the thesis because it reflects how the economy exchanged goods and the extent that they went to to maintain a developing society. Now back to the big questions. Question number one. How did the Europeans adapt to new trading systems and how had they changed when travelers brought more goods and diseases? According to the evidence, European trade had increased the dependency of transatlantic travelers. European diseases like smallpox had made it worse for the lives of children and adults as they did not have the medicine or any cure to save them. Question number two. What type of negotiations were made between the colonies and how had they affected their views of life? According to the evidence, during European expansions, Europeans had wanted to negotiate with the Native Americans to free their English hostages, but failed. Instead, American Indians had done free labor work, which had worked for a small period of time. Now, question number three. What type of actions did Europeans take to keep their communities running? According to the evidence, Europeans had increased their labor industry by working to keep their communities running. They had worked on tobacco, cocoa, sugar, and cotton plantations to increase their trade. On this last slide, we've linked all of the different websites and places where we found our historical evidence and sources, and it also shows the slide numbers where those sources are located in our slide presentation. But overall, this is the end of our slide presentation. We hope you guys have enjoyed and learned something about colonial empires and the new systems of labor.